Hello and welcome to the Bison Box Office. My name is Katie Vallone. And as, as you can see, this is not Lexi Naples with me today. Nope. <laughs> this is Cody Coleman and I have him today because, you know, we have this superhero episode here for you guys. And I'm not that big of a person on superheroes, no. honestly. <laughs> um, so I have Cody here today to, you know, help me explain a little bit more about the movies we're going to talk about today. And today's uh, movies we're going to talk about are Batman vs Superman, Dawn of Justice, and then Captain America Civil War. So, you know, two great movies that are coming out. Um, we have Batman vs Superman already out, Civil War coming out May 6th. Um, so let's just, can you tell me a little bit of a backstory of Batman vs Superman? Because, you know, there was a little, like, in the beginning of Batman vs Superman with Batman, but just like overall, like how they got together. All right, so in Batman vs Superman, we see Bruce Wayne going through Metropolis trying to save his company. And that's because in Man of Steel, the movie before this, uh, Superman is fighting General Zod and he destroys Metropolis. Okay. And then Batman's backstory, we get a quick little like slow motion montage yeah. Yeah. of him. It shows his family getting shot and killed out uh, outside of the play. Yeah. I think like it's a called. Theater. Yeah, it's a theater. Um, and then it shows him like running away, and then later we see him in the Bat Cave, and he, he explains to Alfred he's been doing this for 20 years. What's going to stop him now? Yeah, like the bats like brought him up, like he was in a cave, he fell in, and the bats like you know helped they, him up, and that's how yeah. you know he became Batman. Yeah. I, I thought that was a really like cool thing to see because I'm like, wow, like I I didn't know that's how he became Batman and all. It was cool visually, but I personally exactly. thought it was cheesy. Oh, he did. <laughs> well, see, for someone I you know haven't seen Batman stuff, but you know I thought that was like kind of clever to bring it up. But again, if oh, you've yeah, seen it, it you're probably like, why are you doing it? <laughs> but you know, just a little um, backstory about Batman vs Superman. Um, pretty much everyone is fed up with Superman. Basically. Um, they're like, he's very dangerous, he can kill anyone instantly, and, you know, he went to India and tried to save his, um, Amy Adams, who, what's her name in the movie? Lois Lane. Lois Lane, and, you know, <laughs> they're saying he killed, like, a thousand people or something, or I don't know how many. Yeah, he, he went and saved her because she was caught with, it was some kind of terrorist. Yeah, it was, like, FBI stuff. Yeah, it was F know. FBI stuff, like... Real classified. Yeah. So. <laughs> so then he saves her. He kills a lot of people, and everyone's like, Superman isn't safe. So Batman also doesn't really like Superman in the movie. Um, he tries. He thinks he's too reckless and powerful, and um, he fears that the world is, you know, going to be killed because of Superman. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, also you can't, I mean, I don't want to say, but you can't always believe what you see, and, you know, we, we have a clip with um, yes. Clark Kent and Bruce Wayne, and you know they talk about with each other, and you know you just can't believe what you see. What's your position, the Bat Vigilante in Gotham? Daily Planet. Do I, do I own this one, or is that the other guy? Civil liberties are being trampled on in your city. Good people living in fear. Don't believe everything you hear, son. I've seen it, Mr. Wayne. He thinks he's above the law. The Daily Planet criticizing those who think they're above the law is a little hypocritical, wouldn't you say? Considering every time your hero saves a cat out of a tree, you read a puff piece editorial about an alien who, if he wanted to, could burn the whole place down. There wouldn't be a damn thing we could do to stop it. Most of the world doesn't share your opinion, Mr. Wayne. Maybe it's the Gotham City in me, and we just have a bad history with freaks dressed like clowns. So that scene is a very intense moment between uh, <laughs> Clark and Bruce. I think, you know, they're both like, you know, my, my side, my other side of my life is way better than yours. And, you know, you know, Bruce is like, you know, Superman has to go. And, yeah. You know. He also I just think thinks, that's a great scene because it's like you get a feel they know who each other are. Yeah, they they like. You think that they know each other, but they're just like, they don't. Yeah. But we know. But we all like, know. Obviously, who they are. <laughs> I think that was a really cool scene to show. Um, but, you know, obviously, they fight and all of that. And, you know, we I'm not going to tell you guys who won or anything. No spoilers. There's no spoilers <laughs> here. You have to go see the movie. But, um, you know, Ben Affleck, you know, he played Batman. And 
He was a great. Um, I think he was good, but what do you think? I thought he did a great take on Bruce Wayne. Uh, Batman was a little iffy for me, but yeah. all in all, I think it was great. Um, the director, Zack Snyder, he wanted Ben to do a little bit different outtake, like different look on yeah. Batman. And, you know, we have an interview with Ben Affleck um, about, you know, how he took on a different way of Batman. So we'll show that to you right now. I never feel like you play Batman, you play Bruce Wayne. You know, that's really where, where you're investment kind of is and it, it sort of pays off in, in the Batman side of things but um, you know Zach approached me and had a really specific take on the character and wanted to do a guy who was not 25 and you know mourning the death of his parents and deciding to become a vigilante but instead is a guy who had been a vigilante for 20 years and was feeling like well, what's, what's the point you know what, what, was it, is it worth anything what we've done and um, who then you know loses friends uh, during the Black Zero event and blame Superman and kind of channels all his rage and, and disillusionment at him. I think it was a little smart choice for um, Zack to kind of change the way um, Batman was yeah. in different movies. But, you know, um, overall, um, Ben did a great job, you know, yeah. in the beginning. And I think the only reason he gets criticism is because of the Christopher Nolan trilogy with Christian Bale. They, they're comparing it to that a lot. I have a question, though. Um, just, like, in the movie, you know, like, how obviously he didn't have that dark voice that, yes. like, he does, like, when he's Batman to when he's, you know, um, Bruce. is. Was that, like, how he was in, like, other movies? Like, did he already always have that dark voice, or is that the difference? Um, it's usu He usually does have, like, that darker voice okay. when he's in costume. Oh, okay. So yeah. it's, like, different between people. Got yeah. it. I was a little confused with that stuff. Yeah, in, in this movie, it was more of like a voice changer than in, yeah, the, in, in the costume. Yeah, right? than okay. with Christian Bale's version, he deepened his voice. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, well, you know, obviously we have that conflict between Batman and Superman, and, you know, I really didn't know there was a conflict between them until, like, you know, they came out with this movie. So can you explain a little bit? Yeah, to me so about that? Uh, back in 1986, uh, Frank Miller, who he's a comic book writer, mm -hmm. he wrote the four part series, The Dark Knight Returns, which pitted Batman and Superman at each other. Okay, so that's how it all started yes. in this movie. Okay, well, we have um, another, we talked to Ben more about the conflict with uh, Batman versus Superman, so we'll send that to you right now. I think it's interesting kind of to note that, that these two guys who are at total odds, um, you know, here in this movie are actually really, you know, want the same things in truth, you know. I mean, of course, that's the question people ask is like, well, why are Batman versus Superman, why are they fighting? Because everybody thinks of them both as good guys. And the movie kind of points out that, you know, um, two people who both consider themselves good guys can find themselves um, on opposite ends of a conflict. So I think, you know, the conflict overall was good because, you know, I mean, I didn't know they had a conflict, but I'm guessing it was good. Oh, uh, yeah, guys, it, was, how, it was pretty good. Yeah. How they made it. But now we're going to get to my favorite part of the movie where um, Wonder Woman, yes. she came in. And I love Wonder Woman. Obviously, girl power, you know, all that. But... Um, I think how they portrayed her in the movie, you know, she was kind of like this mysterious girl, like, walking around. And then Batman finds, you know, stuff on her. Yes, and finds that a Lex, file. Yeah, that Lex Luthor had. Lex Corp, yep. So, um, and obviously it shows, like, way back in the day how she was Wonder Woman, and now he knows, like, this mysterious woman is Wonder Woman. And, you know, we have a clip of Ben, you know, talking to us about how um, Wonder Woman was in the movie. So we'll go to that clip right now. I give Gal credit. She's, she, she, I think she's just a movie star. I mean, she's beautiful. She's strong. She's assertive. She's a really good actress. Um, you know, she's exactly who you would want for that part. You know, I think Wonder Woman, she was a great little, you know, thing to put in the movie. Oh, Obviously, yeah. like, for me seeing it, I was like, wow, she's awesome. Like... She really, you know, battled, um, what is it, Doomsday? Doomsday, yeah. You know, I think, villain. you know, she held her weight, because I think oh, Batman yeah. kind of... Batman was, like, creeping away you know, the whole time. He was, he was like, like, oh, I can't oh, handle that. I got that. hit. I'm going to move away. <laughs> and Wonder Woman's like, uh, no, I'm going to hit him. So that was pretty awesome for her. Um, do you have any, like, more insight about Wonder Woman? But, yeah, uh, 
the director of the Wonder Woman movie, it's coming up, uh, she said she wants people to see Wonder Woman as this badass chick, just make girls feel right like on. you can be badass. It's not just about all the guys. And so the it's like coming anymore. out soon. Uh, in a few years, yes. Oh, yes. I'll see it. Oh, because yeah. of this movie, I'm going to see oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so now we're going to have um, a little interview with Henry Cavill, who he's bae. He's pretty awesome. He's pretty he's cute. Okay. <laughs> no, he's really cute, especially in this movie, I think, um, just because Superman, you're like, oh, Superman. I mean, for me, probably not you, obviously, oh, no. but for me. <laughs> um, so we obviously talked with Henry a little bit more about Superman and how everyone sees him more as a villain than yes. anything. And, I mean, obviously, if I didn't see the movie, I wouldn't think of Superman as a villain because, you know, what I've seen is, oh, Superman saved me from a building. Yeah, Superman saved saves the world. He saved my cat from a tree. <laughs> and, like, you know, he's awesome, but, you know, others see him as a villain because Yeah, in, in the movie, they see him, they're, they fear him, so they see him as yeah. someone who's no good. And, you know, I, I feel bad about that because, you know, you don't want Superman to be like that. I mean, in a girl's way, I'm just like, why? Why do you want, <laughs> you know, him to be bad? So we had a quick interview with Henry Cavill about um, Superman in the movie and why people think of him as a bad guy. So we'll get to that clip right now. Superman is, well, first of all, he's Superman as opposed to Kal-El or Clark. And, I mean, he's all three, but he's for the first time, Superman. And I think we hear the word uttered once in that movie, and that's in the third act. And now he's officially Superman, that's all he's referred to as. And so he's in a place of, he's taken on the mantle of the world's protector. And it's a mantle which feels right. It sits well, it's a heavy one, but it sits well. The tricky thing is that mankind views him in very differing ways. The most obvious divide is those who see him as a hero and those who see him as a potential threat or fear him. He was prepared for the idea of people fearing him because his father warned him off when he was a boy, as we saw in Man of Steel. He wasn't prepared, however, for people to accuse him of doing evil and to make him the bad guy because Essentially, he's done nothing but try and be the good guy and save everyone, and it hurts him that he can't save everyone. And so it hurts him even more that people then accuse him of evil. You know, I think, I mean, I got a little distracted because of his just <laughs> creamy voice overall because... That accent. Oh, it's so beautiful, but, you know, I have my heart set with Thor and Chris Hemsworth. I can't, I can't let that oh, go. Oh, you gotta stick with those Marvel guys. I can't yeah. let that go. Oh, my goodness. But, you know... Overall, I think he also did a great job playing Superman, but I mean, you know, Clark Kent, Superman, <laughs> Clark Kent, you know, gotta have the glasses. I think I look like him. Oh, yeah. I think I For do. Sure. For sure. I look like him. Supergirl. Yeah, it's like Supergirl. <laughs> yeah. This is how I, you know, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. You'll never know. But um, I mean, I'll just say I've never seen Supergirl and Katie Vallone in the same room together. Oh my god, oh my. wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? All right, well, done with that funny stuff. Got to fix my glasses. Um, so overall, you know, we talked to some people on campus about yes. what they thought about um, the Dawn of Justice movie, and we'll show you that real quick right now. Uh, I think he looks pretty good. He's a bit too young to be playing the older kind of Batman that they're going for right now, but I, I think he makes a nice Bruce Wayne. Maybe not just a good Batman. I think I know who's going to win, but that's if DC Comics follows, uh, DC movies follows their comics, like Mar Marvel movies follow their comics. I feel like Ben Affleck could be a great Batman, but I don't know if he's starting to for the role of Batman. I think it's going to be Batman that wins. I, I mean, they've already had a big Superman movie. I think this is basically going to be a Batman movie in disguise. In the DC Comics, Batman has won on multiple occasions, but in all honesty, I don't know for this movie. In my opinion, I like Batman more, so I feel like Batman's going to win. You know, I think it's just great that we got a little input from obviously people on campus. We want to get them involved as much yep. as po possible, you know, see these movies. So that was great for them to see. Um, so overall, what did you think of the movie? 
Batman vs Superman. Yeah. Um, overall, I thought it was a great launching point for DC's movie universe. Um, as a movie in a whole, there were some times it could have ended, but yeah. it just kept going. Yeah. I thought, you know, as someone, I haven't really seen a lot of uh, superhero movies like this. Um, I really wanted to see this, obviously, because it's Batman vs Superman. Um, I agree with you. I think there was a lot of action at some places where yes. I was kind of like, is this going to be over? How is this doing? Very like, over Stuff the top. like that, yeah. But overall, I, th I thought it was a good movie. I think um, critics kind of gave it a little. The critics, oh, don't get me started on yeah, the Yeah, they kind of like it a 29, it a 29% on Rotten Tomatoes, that's just awful. You know, I didn't think it was that bad. It wasn't. No. But, you know, overall, good movie. Yes. Right? So now we're going to get into our second movie, which honestly, yes. I don't know a lot about. So again, And I know you. just about everything about it. Exactly. <laughs> so thank you for being here. Um, we're going to talk about Captain America Civil War. And so again, it's right up here. Oh, well, we have Captain America and Iron Man up here. So, you know, main guys. And um, who's Scarlett Johansson? Uh, Black Widow. Oh, yes, Black yeah. Widow. <laughs> you know, she's awesome. So, I mean, if she's in the movie, I would love to see it. But oh, um, she is. can you tell us Lucky a little bit? You. Yeah. Can you <laughs> tell us a little bit about um, Captain America? So, Captain America Civil War, uh, people are starting to say superheroes need to be put in check after the, the events in the last Avengers movie. Um, so, they bring everyone, everyone together. They say, hey, you need to sign this. You're going to be, basically, you're going to be weapons for the government. Okay. And Captain America says, no deal. So that's how it kind of starts and all. Well, we have a trailer for you guys to watch, so we'll take a quick look at that right now. Buck. Do you remember me? Your mom's name is Sarah. You used to wear newspapers in your shoes. You're a wanted man. I don't do that anymore. Well, the people who think you did are coming right now. And they're not planning on taking you alive. Captain, while a great many people see you as a hero, there are some who'd prefer the word vigilante. You've operated with unlimited power and no supervision. That's something the world can no longer tolerate. I know how much Bucky means to you. Stay out of this one. Please. You only make this worse. Are you saying you'll arrest me? There will be consequences. Captain, you seem a little defensive. Well, it's been a long day. If we can't accept limitations, we're no better than bad guys. That's not the way I see it. Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. I just want to make sure we consider all our options. Because people that shoot at you usually wind up shooting at me too. You know what's about to happen. Do you really want to punch your way out of this? What do we do? We fight. I'm sorry, Tommy. You know I wouldn't do this if I had any other choice. But he's my friend. So was I. That's pretty awesome. Um, you know, we have Ant-Man, we have, you know, what other, you know? You have Ant-Man, you have War Machine, you have Iron Man, you have yeah. uh, Black Widow, Hawkeye, Ant-Man. But no Thor or Hulk. No Thor or Hulk. See, Sad those days. were my favorites from the Avengers. Those were my yeah. favorite two people. Um, you know, obviously I love Thor, Chris Hemsworth. My oh, man. He's so dreamy. He is. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. I know. But, you know, and also Hulk, like, who doesn't want Hulk in there? But I think, you know, they just didn't want to get involved. Well, whatever. as we know from the last Marvel movie, uh, The Avengers, mm 
uh, Hulk what went off on his own, didn't want anyone to bother him. So that's that explains why he's not in this movie. That's sad. Now, Thor, we're not quite sure why. We're assuming he's taking care of business on Asgard. But you know. Yeah. He can I do think anything. He just didn't <laughs> want to get involved. That's my put in it. He's too mature for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, honestly, um, I don't know a lot about this movie. I mean, the trailer kind of helped me a little bit, yeah. but overall, I mean, so Captain America just doesn't want to... Captain America, if you follow the movies, first he works with the government mm -hmm. to take down like the Nazis, yeah. Red Skull, and then the second movie, he's betrayed by his government, okay. where S.H.I.E.L.D. is taken over by HYDRA. You have no idea what I'm talking no. about. <laughs> That's okay. I haven't seen them. <laughs> they do out there. Exactly. You guys know what I'm talking about. So Help Shield me. Shield is taken over by Hydra. So then Cap doesn't trust his government anymore. Okay. And when they ask him to sign a document saying that he will be a weapon for the government, he says, "I don't agree with it. I've already been betrayed once. Why be betrayed again?" Yeah. So in you know Iron Man, how does he get involved with it? Iron right? Man, he's all for it. He says, "Yep, I'll be a I'll be with the government." Okay. And uh, basically. He wants to catch the guy who's been causing the most problems, and that's the okay. Winter Soldier, who is actually Captain America's best friend from childhood, Bucky Barnes. Oh, I did see it. that was in the trailer that he. Yes, he so that's hurt him. that's so, another big conflict. In the yeah, movie. I mean, you know, this movie does come out May sixth, so keep a lookout for it. Um, we obviously, I'm gonna go see it because I have no idea, but you know, <laughs> all these superheroes coming together. I mean, who wouldn't go see it? You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and also, like, a lot of strong, like, roles in here. Scarlett Johansson, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Paul Rudd. Um, you know, it's and weird because it's a different Spider-Man. Yeah, from the newcomer Tom Holland is playing Spider-Man. And, you know, you know, fun fact, uh, which Spider-Man? Spider-Man 2? Sp Amazing Spider-Man 2. Amazing Spider-Man 2. It's filmed in my hometown, Rochester, New York, so... Nice. If you saw, you know, some of the city scenes, that was from my <laughs> I didn't go, but a lot of my friends were extras, so I think that's pretty cool. But um, now we're going to talk about some movies look out for that are coming out. The Jungle Book and My Big Fat Greek Wedding 2. So let's talk about Jungle Book real quick. That was directed by John Falra. Who also directed Iron Man 1 and 2, and he was in all three movies. See? We've got our superhero theme Making going. Making the connection. There we go. <laughs> Uh, some stars are in it, Scarlett Johansson, Bill Murray, Idris Elba, you know, really big stars, obviously, yes. and, you know, if some people, you know, back home, they don't know the movie, just a little to get you to know, it's about an orphan boy um, who's raised in the jungle, and, you know, he's raised by wolves, panthers, bears, monkeys, you know, you name it, and, you know, it's how he survived in there, so we have uh, a trailer for you guys to watch, so we'll uh, show that to you right now. Many strange tales are told of this jungle, but none so strange as the tale of the cub we call Mowgli. The original Jungle Book, the 67 animated Disney version, was something I grew up with. When you take on a piece of content and you update it, you have to be sure that there's a reason for it. What makes us able to make this movie now is the technology to have photoreal animal animation. Trust in me. I'm a huge fan of the original book. It's really extraordinary writing. He was quite a guy, Kipling. So when John Favreau said, would you like to do this, I really couldn't say no. Fear, danger, humor, and also emotion. I really want to tackle those sensibilities. Come on, let's go. Jungle Book is a great story. And as with all of my films, it always starts with the cast. We have Bill Murray in the role of Baloo. Am I in the right monkey temple? Baloo introduces Mowgli to the more fun aspect of the jungle. Chris Walken plays King Louie. Call me Louie. Well, King Louie is the king of the jungle. He's a gigantic gorilla. Where you going, man cub? And Idris Elba plays Shere Khan the tiger. He's got a lot of power to his voice. Mowgli, they've given it a name. 
think the most exciting thing about being a part of this project was that my daughter and my son were gonna get to see a classic with their dad's voice. Come on. Hey, come back! Scarlett Johansson plays Ka the Snake. I know what you are. In this film, Ka is more of a storyteller. Would you like to see? Ben Kingsley plays Bagheera. The characters are really well defined. You must be the very worst wolf I've ever seen. We have Neil Seti, who plays Mowgli, the only live action character in the film. <coughs> Mowgli, when a kid is not intimidated, is charismatic, and Neil is one of those guys. You said they didn't stink. Just put some uh, honey on those. We have a perfect cast. All of these people have come together to create something big and exciting. So I'm just so happy that they, you know, Disney keeps on going with these movies that they're yeah, making. Yeah, they keep reimag almost reimagining their movies as live action. Exactly, movies. and you know, you know, the graphics and everything in here looks yes. so real too. And I, I know, I just love it. I, I'm definitely going to see that one. Uh, next movie we're going to talk about is my big fat Greek wedding, which oh, I yeah. know about, and I know nothing about. <laughs> so I beat him in this one. But um, that's directed by Kirk Jones, and it's written and starred by Nia Vidalis. I'm sorry if I said it wrong. But, um, you know, it's pretty cool because she is the main, you know, person in there, and she wrote it also. So, you know, it's from yeah. the past, you know, Big Fat Greek Wedding, and now, you know, it's here. So um, just to give you a little insight, it's the Portocalis family. Um, there's a secret. So it brings their whole family back together again for even a bigger wedding. So... You know, it's a fun uh, wedding like that. And we have a quick uh, clip with Aunt V, who is now wanting to be the wedding planner of the whole thing. <laughs> so we'll show that to you right now. In the first My Big Fat Creek wedding, we get married and our little girl was about six. Now you will see this story pick up with that little girl grown up. You better get married. You're starting to look old. Dad! You can't say that to her. The thing I wanted to do when I set out to write the sequel is show that whether we like it or not, you become your own parents. With Ian and Tula, the shine's kind of worn off. Take your husband on a date, and afterward, set him slippery like an eel. Mia! You're welcome. Shave everything. Paris is a 16-year-old that knows she's right and that her parents should just get out of her face. Florida, Texas, New York, these are the colleges I'm applying to. Why do you want to leave me? <coughs> Payback. Obviously, there's going to be another really big wedding. The wedding is off! Higher! Use your man muscles! The entire extended family gets involved. The top is more pink! Greek weddings, as we know, they're a little intense. I'm on my way! I wanted to show that sometimes there can be a rebirth in everything. Even though I'm taking a step back, I will always be right here. The audiences will love these people. Take, yeah, a, take a photo! photo. Take All right, a pull my neck. One, two, pull! Everyone relates to somebody in this film, and I like that. Let's do this thing. You know, it's just one of those like family movies all over again, oh, yeah. starting up, and you know, Aunt V wanting to take control of another wedding. So you know, I mean, I feel like I have a big Italian family, yeah. so I can <laughs> kind of relate to that a little bit. But obviously, Greeks are very big with family. I know oh, yeah. that. So I have a lot of Greek friends back home. They're exactly. real close to the family. Exactly. <laughs> So, great movie, so uh, that's coming out soon. Um, you know, thank you for joining us here at the Bison Box Office. Um, again, you know, we uh, went over Batman vs. Superman, Civil War, Jungle Book, uh, My Big Fat Greek Wedding. So, a lot of good movies are coming out, yes. so it's great for you guys to watch. Obviously, we have some of the posters here and all that, but um, our next episode is going to be uh, the Hunger Games special, and I'll yes. have Lexi back. <laughs> you know, it was great to have you here, though. Oh, Thank thanks. you for giving me your input and everything. But next one will be the Hunger Games, and we'll be all dressed up and ready because, <laughs> you know, I'm a very big fan of Hunger Games. So thank you again for coming on the no show. No problem. It was a pleasure. And thank you for uh, joining with us today, and I'll see you on campus.
A Age of Ultron was the Such only one that he man. took his shirt off in. Who did? Thor. Thor took his shirt off in that? Yeah, yeah whenever he Hold went. On, let's check and make sure. Which Katie? one? Which one? Age of Ultron, the second uh, shirt off? Avengers. I'll go look now. <laughs> <laughs>